Hello, you are one of the Duna Dine, are you not? Please allow me to introduce myself. Bilbo Baggins at your service. Eredan, at yours. Always happy to meet one of the Guardians of the North. I've heard about what you and your friends did to help my Frodo and the Dunedain reach Rivendell safely. You'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it all down properly. Write it down? Are you then a chronicler, Mr. Baggins? A chronicler? Oh, oh, no more of an enthusiastic scribbler, really. History is just one of my interests. Lately, I've been working on poetry, mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn, and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Is that so? Well then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him Ladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him Ladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. To challenge the Lord of the Rings. Hmm, hey now, that's not bad, no. Maybe I can work with that. You missed your calling, my friend. Perhaps you should put down your weapons and take up a pen. One day, perhaps. But for now, we have more need of warriors than poets. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. I will take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? I will indeed. Farewell now. Well met, friend. It's an honor to make the acquaintance of one of Farin's valiant companions. I'm Glawn, son of Groen, from the Lonely Mountain. And one of Bilbo's companions in the quest to slay the dragon Smaug. It's an honor to meet such a famous dwarf. I'm Eridan of the Dunedain. I heard about that business at Sarn Ford. And they say that three of you brought down an orc chieftain at Fornost. <laughs> I expect I'll be hearing of even greater deeds before long. It does my heart good to see a dwarf, an elf, and a man working together again. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days it does, when the three kindred fought alongside one another in the Battle of the Five Armies. What could have been important enough to bring you all the way from your distant home? I came at the bidding of my lord, King Dane. My son Gimli and a few companions came with me, for all paths grow dangerous under the spread of the shadow. With the enemy seeking news of Bilbo, Dane thought we should come to Elrond for counsel. I never imagined what I'd learn when we got here, but it may be wise to say no more. Aragorn has told us that Frodo bears the One Ring. Alas, that we should live in such times. Well, Frodo knows what he must do. If I were younger, I'd go with him. But we must each serve where we are most needed even as you must, with such friends as you trust. And where do you think I am needed the most? That's plain as the beard on my face. It's right here, of course. You've uncovered a deadly enemy in this Agandaur. As long as he's free to carry out Sauron's will, he'll gather more orcs, goblins, and trolls to his banner. Rivendell, the Shire, the Breelands, no place will be safe from his wrath. He must be stopped. Sauron's attention will be focused largely on the south. Perhaps if we thwart his plans here, it will distract him. That could benefit Frodo and the Fellowship on their quest. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> Only this fly's sting will be deadly. 
and it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Hello. You are Aradan, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. And you are Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me about you. And your burden. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. You are most welcome, Frodo. It is only now that we have learned just how important our task was. I am pleased we were able to help. It seems as if I owe everyone thanks. You, Aragorn, Elrond. Without the help of each of you, I wouldn't be here now. Anyone who travels far in the wild is certain to find peril. These are dangerous times. I've learned that only too well. I had hoped the danger would end once I reached Rivendell, but it seems as if it is just beginning. I hope I can find the courage to face the road ahead. Take heart. You will have Aragorn and Gandalf with you. No one could ask for better companions on a dangerous journey. Yes, I can't think of a better pair to have with me in a pinch than Gandalf and Strider. Without them, I would feel as if I was wandering alone in the dark. I feel there is more to you than meets the eye, my friend. I trust that you will not fail us. Go with the goodwill of all who remain behind. I thought it rare to find one dwarf so far from home, yet here is another. If I may say, there's something about you that reminds me of my companion Farin. Gimli, son of Gloan, at your service. Your eyes serve you well, Ranger. Farin is indeed a kinsman of mine and a most valiant dwarf. And if I may say, your own fame has gone before you. You fought well at Fornost, and I hear much praise of your exploits. Most impressive. Though, of course, you had Farin's help. <laughs> I must concede the usefulness of a dwarf in battle. He wields his weapon to good effect, as long as he stays clear of my knees. Useful? I dare say you'll find him more than useful. Why, he's a hero of the Battle of the Five Armies. Men, elves, and dwarves against orcs and goblins. And many an orc has felt the caress of his axe. Farin said no word of other kin coming to join him. What brings you here to Emladris? Aye, it's a long march from the halls of Erebor, but grim news goes on swift feet. It was for Bilbo's sake we came, with a warning that the servants of Sauron wished to find him and his ring. Thrice a black rider came to the front gate of Erebor, demanding news of Bilbo, and threatens to return once more. Ere that should happen, King Dane sent my father, Glowen, to seek the advice of Elrond. You've heard the results of the Council? I see you have. I have sworn to protect Frodo upon his quest, an oath I will fulfill though all the orcs of Middle-earth stand in my way. When do you leave for the South? Not soon enough for my liking. Elrond is sending scouts many leagues in all directions, and we will wait for their news. They search for signs of any Nazgul that may have survived the flooding of the river. And there are other threats besides, as you well know. My heart forebodes that the North is not safe. Elrond has asked us to scout the Edenmoors. But what is it that worries you about the North? I like not what I've heard of this Agandar you drove from Fornost. He could yet cause grief untold. There are rumors of gatherings of orcs, goblins, and other deadly foes growing in strength. When the Dark Lord strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell. It would ease my heart to know that you'll look to the defense of the North for as long as you're needed. With help from Farron, of course. For my part, you have my word on it. And I have no doubt your trustworthy kinsman and Andriel will stand by my side. My Govanen, well met and welcome to the safe haven of Imladris. My Govanen, Lady Arwen, it is a great honor. The Dúnedain are always welcome here. You have endured great danger and given us urgent warning of a new threat to the North. 
For this, we honor you, Eridan. It is my duty as a ranger, nothing more. I am glad to be of service to my lord Aragorn. You show the modesty worthy of a hero. Estelle and my brothers have spoken highly of your courage at Fornost, and I thank you for your part in seeing to my brother's safe return. Please, take your ease and rest a while in our halls. You will find all your heart could desire, whether it be food, drink, song, or storytelling. I have an errand I must not forget. Here is an unfinished poem from Bilbo. He asks for your opinion and advice, saying the subject is very close to your heart. Then it must be about Estelle. He is fond of writing verses in honor of his good friend, and therefore often comes to me for advice. You may leave it with me, Eridan. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Thank you, lady. Perhaps the time will come when I can enjoy these gentle arts, but that time is not today. Your father has tasked me with scouting the Etten Moors. Then I will not keep you, but we may be of service to one another. I am helping my father brew a potion known as Miravor. One sip of Miravor can renew heart and soul and bring new vigor to weary limbs. I am in short supply of certain rare ingredients that may be found in the Etten Moors. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring any you find while carrying out your mission. With enough ingredients, I will return the favor by brewing an extra flask that you may have for your own use. Gladly, Lady Arwen. That is a generous offer. Should I find what you require, I will return to you once my mission is complete. Continue the search, but be wary. More than one ranger has been lost in these wild lands.
Greetings, my friends. I could scarce believe what I saw from above. But elf, dwarf, and man battling the enemy together, such things are not often seen. I knew it had to be you. Bellarom, it is a strange coincidence that we should meet again so soon. I did not think to find you here in the Ettenmoors. Nor did I. It does seem a strange coincidence, but a happy one nonetheless. How is it that you happen to be here in the Ettenmoors? I serve as a scout for my people. We are at war with the stone giant Bagrasar, who has attacked us without cause. A stone giant? I thought such creatures existed only in children's stories. No, the stone giants certainly do exist, but they are seldom seen beyond the highest mountain vales. I was never told they were hostile to our kind, however. They seldom are. Eagles and the stone giants have shared the mountain heights without conflict for many generations. But this giant, Bagrasar, is different. Without provocation, he ambushed some of our people, taking them unaware and striking them down with hurled boulders. Many of our Ares he also destroyed, along with the defenseless fledglings who nested there. Gwaihir summoned his strength to punish the giant, but he fled before us. We believe he has come here to the Etten Moors, where he is gathering an army of orcs and trolls. Bagrasar is a threat to all. The sooner he is destroyed, the safer we shall be. A threat to the Eagles is a threat to us all. Let us join with you in the hunt for this giant. Your aid would be most welcome. Together we may be able to best him. Every hour he lives, his following grows greater. Let us press on!
endure this light.
Archers, on the high ground! Hidden Dunadine cache. Our way is barred.
continue through that door. The smell alone tells me we have found a troll's lair.
I'm out. has hidden some supplies here.
Ambush! It is finished! My people are avenged. And behold, here come your kin. My lord. It would appear that you have done our work for us, Belaram. Not I, Lord Gwaihir. Your thanks belong to these three. Andriel, Farin, and Aradan. It is they who rid us of Bagrasar. The same three that saved you at Fornost? Indeed. A remarkable chance that we should meet again. If chance it was, your fate seems strangely intertwined. But be that as it may, we are doubly grateful to you. First for saving the life of Balaram, and now for slaying the giant. We are glad your fallen kin have been avenged. Bagrasar was a threat to all free folk. It is only fitting we should join together to destroy him. Well spoken. But I wonder what purpose you had for coming to the Ettenmoors. This is no place for idle wandering. Elrond Half-Elven suspected the enemy might be gathering here. It was he who sent us to investigate. He also thought we might find a servant of the enemy here. A man by the name of Agendaur. Belaram has told us of that one, but I fear you have come too late. We have searched the Ettenmoors thoroughly in our hunt for Bargrazar, yet we have seen no sign of this servant of the Dark Lord. If he was here, we can be reasonably certain he is here no longer. My people will work to disperse the enemy forces that remain in the Moors. We will be on guard against the return of Agendaur. 
Then we should return to Elrond at Imladris. He will be anxious for news, and we have already been long away. I will arrange for a messenger. My lord, I owe my life to these three. And I too believe Agandaur to be a grave threat to the free peoples of the north. Eagles no less so than any other. If you would grant me leave, I wish to accompany them and aid them in their quest. You ask a great deal, Belaram. I may have need for all my followers soon. Yet I perceive a great destiny awaits these three, and it seems you are now part of it. Very well. I will grant you permission to join with them for as long as you see fit. Unless Belaram plans to carry his friends like sheep in his talons, he will need help. If it pleases you, my lord, I will gladly accompany them as well. I too have a stake in this quest. Let me be the third. So be it. Three who cleave the air to match three who walk the earth. May fortune favor you all. Arminel, Baron Thor, you shall be at Belaram's command. Obey his word until such time as you return to us. Now I must depart. Many forces are at work across Middle-earth, and many events take shape. I must consider what part the Eagles will play in them. We are grateful for your aid, Lord Gwaihir, and your trust. Farewell. Return at last. We grew concerned for you. I fear you have missed your chance to say farewell to the members of the Fellowship, for they have departed. Clearly you found danger in the Etenmores, yet you have returned safely, and in the company of three of the Great Eagles, no less. There is a story behind this, and I am eager to hear it. We found trolls and orcs preparing for war, just as we feared and they were led by a renegade stone giant. He was attacking the eagles. With the help of the eagle Belarom, we were able to make an end of the giant. That was well done, but this is troubling. Why would a stone giant act in this manner? They have never been hostile to free folk before. We took these tokens from some of our fallen foes. That's Agandaur's black raven emblem, plain enough. Then we can be certain he is behind the giant's descent into evil. But there are also other tokens here I recognize. These are the marks of the orcs of Mount Gundabad, far to the north. Do you think it is possible Agandaur is there, at Gundabad? It may well be. From Mount Gundabad, the orcs have many tunnels and secret pathways connecting the hidden mines and orc holes of the Misty Mountains. The orcs can move along those routes in great numbers without being seen. If Agandaur is raising an army to fight for his master in the north, it is certain he will have traveled to Gundabad. The evidence you have uncovered confirms this to be so, yet we have no way of knowing if he is there still. Perhaps not. But we should not sit idle waiting for him to begin the war on his terms. At the very least, we might learn what the orcs are planning. To walk into such an orc-infested pit as Mount Gundabad would seem like folly. But you have proven your skill and daring many times over. And, too, you have the eagles to aid you. It may be that you will find a way to take the enemy by surprise. It is certain that, were you to destroy Agandaur, you would cut the heart from Sauron's plan to make war in the north. Then let us do just that. We travel to Mount Gundabad. Your courage is commendable, but be certain you are well prepared. Mount Gundabad will not be forgiving of the unwary. Farewell, and may the stars shine upon your path. Eridan, it is good to see you safely returned to Imladris and seemingly untouched in battle. Such is the valor of the Dunedain. I am pleased to be back. 
I have brought you the items you requested from the Ettenmores. Thank you. You have brought these in good time, for we have made barely enough Miravor for present need, and now there is none to spare. With these supplies, I can replace what has been given away, and as I promised, I have kept aside a flask for you. Miravor is potent. Thus, I would advise you to keep this against a time when you are sorely hurt and your strength of will falters. Drink of it then, and you will be restored. Thank you, Lady Arwen. When such a time comes, I will remember your generosity. Is there something amiss, Lady Arwen? It would seem that something troubles you. Is there a way I may help? You have done much already, but I will lay my problem before you. For many years, I have worked secretly upon a banner for Estelle, for Aragorn. It is my hope he will bear it triumphantly into Gondor, when the time is right for him to reclaim his heritage. This must be a banner like no other, and must endure for the ages. To that end, I am using the most precious of metals, Mithril. Our most skilled smith, Angmir, has drawn Mithril into thread for me. The embroidery is nearly done, but as careful as I have been, I fear what I have may not be enough to complete the design. But Mithril can only be found in the mines of Moria, a distant and perilous place by all accounts. Unless you know of anywhere else we might find it. It is true. There is nowhere in Middle-earth where Mithril might still be mined other than Moria. Yet in ages past, quantities of this precious metal made their way by trade and gift to many other places in the world. Yes. If the stories are true, the guardsmen of the Citadel in distant Minas Tirith wear helms of Mithril. Still, it seems there is little hope that more Mithril can be found in so short a time. What exists in the world is likely considered too precious to part with. It seems my fate to travel far and frequently, and what cannot be obtained in peace may sometimes be seized as spoils of war. For the sake of my captain and future king, any Mithril I find shall be yours. That is a noble offer. I would not ask you to go into such danger for this alone, for it may yet prove that I already have all that I require. Still, it would ease my mind, and I would see that you were well rewarded for your courage and generosity. May Elbereth watch over you and keep you safe. <laughs>